A special shout out to my grandson Luke for recording this. It was in a difficult room to record. There was very low light and a curved planetarium screen. Thank you, Los Alamos Mountaineers, for having me. I had fun being with you all. I'm sharing hiking the highest 190 peaks in New Mexico. My favorites, the hardest, the logistically most difficult, the longest, and some equipment tips. I'm pleased to introduce Phil. Phil uh, started hiking as a child in, through Boy Scouts, has had an adventurous uh, life hiking, rafting, um, and many outdoor activities around New Mexico. Um, he took a look at those Colorado 14ers and says, everybody does those. I guess at some point, you know, um, took on a challenge to himself to climb all the, uh, the highest peaks in New Mexico in this group, and he's going to share that with us. But uh, it was a pleasure at dinner to get to know Phil a little bit. He's an adventurous outdoors person all around New Mexico. Um, if his face looks familiar, he's climbing these peaks, and we probably run into him and cross paths, and he leads a group at Albuquerque that that hikes very fast and vigorously up uh, Sandia Mountain. What's that? Cardio hikes. Cardio hikes. So if you really want a, a vigorous one, uh, look on Meetup for a cardio hike. All right, but Phil, I'm going to pass it to you to <coughs> tell us about New Mexico's peaks. Anyway, I am excited to be here. And my grandson, Luke, is the cameraman right there. And um, I, uh, I've been looking forward to this for, for quite some time. And as she was mentioning, I, um, oh, uh, I was about uh, around 50 years old. I'm 69 right now. And I was about 50 when I just decided, well, you know, everybody does the Colorado 14K peaks, and I would like to try to hike all the New Mexico high peaks. And one of the difficulties with the New Mexico high peaks is, is a bit of the logistics in some cases. So I had to jump through some really great hoops logistically to, to try to keep things very respectful. Uh, there's area, times I could you know, snuck on and stuff, but I tried to do, you know, as best I could in some very uh, logistical ways. But anyway, the, um, first off, anybody know what, what mountain peak that is? Yes. Looks like North Trusia. You got it. Yosos. Yeah, you've been there. You've been, so that, the picture, he's, he's got it just right. I'm taking that picture from Chimayosos, and that's North Truchas. On the left is Medio and Middle Truchas. <laughs> And peak 12, 900, uh, a little bit to the north, a little bit to this side. Of, um, so yeah, that's North Truchas. And uh, my list is a really inclusive list. I went in to try to even find all the little sub-peaks and everything. And I, uh, For Mike uh, Butterfield, uh, he owns Butterfield Jewelers in Albuquerque. He's a peak bagger. He's written a couple great books. And I've gone into his books and found the very obscure peaks. I'm still looking at a few more obscure peaks in his book to get. But um, so it uh, was 184. I picked up a few more of the highest ones, the highest 190 in New Mexico. And uh, with a little caveat, I have to say minus two. And there's two I haven't gotten, and which I'll talk about in just a little bit. And I could have stuck on and had them. I've tried four years. I've tried to make donations and so forth to get them, but I haven't been able to do that. And uh, anyway, so the highest, I started off hiking all the 12 and 13,000 foot peaks. And there are about, uh, about around 80 of those. And then I went into, I thought, well, I'm going to have to keep, I want to keep going. So I went into the 11,000 foot peaks. And I got about, um, there's about 80 of those. And then I decided to get the highest 102 major peaks in New Mexico, which basically is from about 
about 10,830 above. So Sandia Peak wouldn't count with it. And um, I'm still working on some kind of obscure ones a little bit. So it's a little bit hard to see maybe in this video. This is a, a picture of the state. And you can see the, the highest 184 in green. You can see them um, mostly conglomerated up towards the top. Over here, there's whitewater baldy in the Gila. There's, it's not bald, and there's no whitewater. I don't know why they call it that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and you can see my little caveat right there, those two little red dots, which I'll talk about. And that's a little closer view of it of uh, the northern New Mexico part right there. And now uh, this, this is the northern New Mexico. Anybody guess what my little little caveat is right there? Cows Pueblo. Cows Pueblo tried four times. They actually took it to the, uh, the council last year for me to go, but I never heard back from that with it. And anyway, I, I log all of my peaks on four, uh, well, three different websites, and I put them on the most competitive of the websites is List of Johns Mountains. I mean, how many of you have heard of List of Johns Mountains? Have some of you heard just one? But it's probably the most competitive, and it's just put together in... Um, um, the United States, and I've, I've put together, my, my trips are like massively documented. Over time, I've taken probably uh, 30,000 pictures, and so, and I've written over 200 trip reports, and I always do my um, GPS uh, treks. Also, people could download the GPS. You can read my trip report and find out what not to do in many <laughs> cases here. And then I, um, I drop my, a lot of times I drop my, um, my GPS track on Google Earth and manipulate it to get a 3D image of it. And recently, and also I've been doing, uh, started doing YouTube videos, five, six, seven, eight minutes of all of the highest peaks in New Mexico. I got about 23. I started in the order that uh, I've been doing them. But recently I've come across... Google Earth Studios, and on, on, um, which is also a great way to study your area before you go. You can uh, you apply to, to get on Google Earth Studios. It's free. They let you know in a couple of days that they accept you, but they accept everybody pretty much. And then you can put in the peak. And I've been on my YouTube videos. I've been getting a video that does all the peaks in the area panoramic view. You can drop your trail on it also, so it's a nice setup. But I put put them on the list of John's Mountains. That's probably the most competitive. And then I've got my YouTube videos there, right there. Why the Wheeler Peak ones? That's my my grandson's dad right there. Although he quit quit with me a few years back, peak diving, but. And I've done, done uh, I've got about 20, 22, 23, but just a nice addition that I've been kind of happy with is that uh, adding on my YouTube videos towards the end, putting Google Earth Studios on there. And if you're interested in finding out some about it and seeing some of the little videos and stuff, you can subscribe. Just put in my name and put 184 Peaks and you'll find it there. Also, peakery.com. And I, how many, well, how many, how many have heard of peakery.com? I think that's my favorite. They do the whole, um, they do the whole earth, all the mountains, and it's probably the most visual of all of them. And I've, I've got right now about 2,600 pictures on there and all my trip reports and GPS tracks, but it's, it's just a beautiful site to go and see um, just gorgeous pictures of all over the world. That, that's my favorite. It's probably the most visual. And on peakery.com, they have challenges. And I would challenge you to do some of these challenges. They, some of them, um, they, and they're, they're 
or getting peaks. It's very hard for me to leisurely hike. I've got to, I got to hike a peak and get it. I can't. I'm very. It's very difficult to leisurely hike. But here's some of the challenges on um, um, peakery.com. We got New Mexico 12ers challenge. I think there's about oh, 52 in there. We got the Taos 12 Peak Challenge, the uh, Taos 5 Peak Challenge. And Albuquerque 20, Albuquerque 10, Santa Fe 20 challenge. So I would challenge you to, to pick one of these and, and go do some of these peaks. The Albuquerque 5, Santa Fe 10, Santa Fe 5 peak challenge. You see on there, they have Thompson's Peak, Glorietta, Baldy. And also, this is my list, which is a very inclusive list. Now, how many have heard of peakbagger.com? Yeah, that's, that, that's the, really the nicest just to make a list, and it's probably the most technical. The most competitive is list of John's Mountains. The most um, uh, visual is Peakery, but this is just the nine, mo most technical and kind of nicest one to do here. And... Um, so of the highest 102 that I went for, they have to have a prominence of uh, 280 feet. You know, and you can make your own challenges. You could do, well, I'm going to get the 55 that have a prominence of 500 feet, or I'm going to get the uh, 150 that have a prominence of uh, 150 feet, or I'm going to pick up the 25 in New Mexico that have a 1,000 foot prominence. So you can kind of make your own rules. I made my own rules around uh, just myself. I have to at least at least have three miles where I don't count it. So I've been to the top of Pikes Peak, but taking a cog train and going 100 yards, I could not log that one. So I've never logged Pikes Peak. <laughs> yeah. And these are some of the highest ones, and you recognize them. There's a, we've got seven of the major and minor 13,000 foot peak, the highest. Wheeler, which I've done four times, and uh, the Church's Peaks. So there's more on the list. You can see my two cave my caveats right there. Still working on them. And there's more on the list, 134, 184. It's actually up to about a, just 190. I've added some more in here. So I was going to talk about just some of the... Uh, the um, some little categories a bit of, of what the um, what the categories uh, and I put a category together of the greatest logistical peak bagging struggles that I've had and I would give number four I'm going to go down four to one number four <coughs> logistically most difficult was hiking the highest peaks in northwest New Mexico. And the problem with it is it's on land grant. And it's, uh, have, uh, it's Browse, Grouse, um, Brazos Peak right there and Grouse Mesa. So I, um, one of my uh, tools to be able to hike peak is I have a 1992 Toyota Land Cruiser, which is just absolutely brutal. It has, uh, you know, the locking differential, and it'll, there's another vehicle, it will be there. And so this hike it took about a half day of four-wheel driving, and then I went with a friend of mine, and we did a 14-mile round-trip backpacking trip. But what was so difficult was it was on land grant. So I hunted the land grant people, contacted Grouse Mesa Outfitters, and offered to pay. I went and met the people there. They let me on the land. I paid and, and uh, hiked those peak. Anybody been on top of those peaks? Grouse Mesa. And I, so I had to, I paid um, the land, land grant fee to be on their peaks. Yeah, but the, so the number three logistical most difficult was just getting the peaks on Bermejo Park Ranch, which is Ted Turner's land in northern New Mexico. It's nearly the size of uh, Rhode Island. 
And uh, so I wrote them and said, well, my son and I started off to try to hike them. We saw the no trespassing signs, went back. I wrote them. I'm an air science teacher. Will you let me hike them? No, 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 no. So twice I had to pay. Uh, I just decided, well, this is, as, for me, as great as uh, uh, going on a cruise. So I paid cruise ship tri uh, prices twice to be on his land. They treated us like we were on a cruise ship, too. And, and these were some of the peaks. You can see up here some pictures of them. And those were the peaks that I got on the two different trips to Bermejo Park Ranch. Have you ever been on Bermejo Park Ranch? That is quite a spread. You feel like you've gone back in time. And I think only animals in New Mexico, wild animals, go there. It's really <laughs> incredible. You know, rather than go on a cruise, go on his land there and, and some of the adventures they have. Right after we did that, they started uh, giving offering peak bagging stuff, too. They said we were the first ones that gone across. It was a 15-mile hike yeah. that we did across. And they said we were the first ones. A guy wanted to go with us. In Fillmore Scoutland, that was a logistic difficulty for me. I thought, I'm an Eagle Scout, they'll let me go. And that was not the case. And uh, I was all planned, ready to go. I wrote them all kinds of stuff. They said, no, the only way you can get on our land is that you have to be part of Scouts. So I went back to my old troop, and I said, I, uh, you know, I'm only joining because I want to hike these peaks, but I'll volunteer a little bit. And so I volunteered about two years to get uh, five. Actually, there's another. There's a yeah, Black Mountain. Um, so I, I volunteered about two years so I could le legitimately get those peaks. And then I, I trained and conditioned the boys there, too. But that was logistically. And my number one logistic difficulty on the Pueblo Peaks. Yeah. I could have snuck on and had them three or four times already. But I wanted a, as clean a record as I could get on things. I know just how I would do it. I'd hike as close as I can. I've gone up there a number of times and tried to hire a guide. I went and offered, uh, I'm very motivated, I offered about 3000 for the preservation of the Taos Indian land and to pay a guide a, a thousand dollars. They took it to the council, but I never heard back with it. And I'm going to keep trying. I'll go back next summer and maybe actually make a donation, whether I go or not, and see if I can. So that's the toughest right there. And I could have, I could have had that plenty of times. Then the hardest peaks. I, uh, uh, I think probably the, um, and kind of going in order, the, the state line peak. Uh, from um, going from, I kind of call that the hallmark hike of my life. You can see all across the top. We went down to the left, all the way to uh, the left is Big Costilla. The right is, what is the right? What do you know? At State Line Peak. It was about a 15 mile hike. And that was, that was uh, pretty tough. That was on Ted Turner's Romeo Park Ranch. Number nine at the hardest, the North Truches Peak. There's a picture, I have the picture on the front there. Um, we did, my son and I did 24 miles, two or three days, but that was up in the, in the tough ones, especially because you can't really get those peaks without backpacking. Uh, at the Rita Peak, uh, interesting thing, we, I was speaking at, at dinner tonight that we had to do it before lightning season. We were going to be four days above the timber line the whole time. So we had to do it before lightning season, uh, which is about the first week in July on. But there were no springs of water up there, so we had to do it while the snow was still there so we could harvest snow for water. And it was just a gorgeous hike being above the timber line for all those days. Five Mountain was a tough one because it was three days, uh, 22 Point seven miles, a gain of about 7,200 feet for the time. And the first day I did almost 15 miles backpacking, about 6,500 feet. So that's up in the tough ones. Uh, Ash Mountain, north, Ash Mountain, south. Those were tough because it was, it was like, high, at first I did a uh, little Costilla, and then I headed over to the, those peaks. And it's like walking across for two, two and a half hours just boulders the size of Volkswagens and half a Volkswagen. It, it was a tough peak. Trampas, uh, Santa Barbara Ridge. <coughs> I had my very 
hardest downhill hiking ever with my dog. It was a, um, I learned in this hike, this is a little tip for you, I learned in this hike that it's better to go up or down a ridge than a valley in almost all cases. But it was a little narrow, narrow V-shaped valley with, I bet, a couple thousand trees uh, along that V-shaped valley. It was so, so exhausting going down that. But what motivated me, this is a big motivator, maybe been a motivator for you also, is I knew I couldn't live there. I knew I had to do the next log and the next log and the next log and, and keep going because I couldn't live there. So <laughs> it was so tough coming down. That, that's number five. Number four, I called the forest service and I said, um, are there any blowdown trees on this hike I'm going on? No, there's nothing. There's just maybe a few. And I got to this one point and um, it's, I could just see endless down trees, way more than what you see right there. And uh, I was just talking about it with Luke, my grandson, and I knew I could go one way, but I couldn't do the loop. And I had to get somebody, so I, I called, and uh, it took me what would have been 20 minutes to, um, uh, it took like two and a half hours, just, I bet there were 10,000 logs, and just over one, over another one. And I had somebody pick me up rather than, and make the loop. I, um, number three, there, there is Sylvia Peak. There's a lot easier way to go, but I went, uh, it was very hard for me. Uh, 4,000 feet elevation gain. <clears throat> I got there too early. I started what looked like a clear patch. It was solid oak, so it was uh, just extremely difficult. I'm carrying a dog <laughs> above my head because I couldn't get him through the oak. I'm cut and bleeding, and it's dark, and I'm wondering, what am I doing here? And <laughs> that was a toughie. There's, there's a, just a beautiful picture of it. There's a lot easier way. Um, that's why you want to read my trip reports and know how not to do it in a lot of the cases. And number two hardest was uh, Sio Mosca, uh, because I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the trails in the peak bagging books show, oh, there's this wonderful great trail, and there was probably a wonderful great trail in the 1960s, and you go and <laughs> to find that trail, and you need to almost be uh, an archaeologist to find that trail. That's, I, I, it's so hard for me not to do a peak, and I backed out of that one because I, I went after work to get halfway there, and I went and did another peak, but the false start made it hard, and no trail, and that was tough, but I guess my toughest hike I did was, uh, and I thought years on this, <laughs> planned it, and that was uh, South Fork Peak, and the uh, peak 11978, and my elevation gain for that one day was 7,100 feet per day, which is, you're calculating that, that's about a quarter of the way from sea level to Mount Everest, and elevation gain in a day, and hard bushwhacking starting 4,000, beat straight up a, a hill, and uh, it was very tough. I think that's probably my number one toughest one right there. Then just some of the longest distance hikes. Um, actually, my longest, for turning 60, I did Mount Whitney with my, my son, and that was 64 miles. But um, just in uh, uh, ones that are over 20 miles, the... the um, the Wheeler Peak to Mount Walter, uh, long distance, the Pecos Baldy one, uh, to Pecos Baldy Lake, Red Dome, there's a picture of Red Dome. And uh, anybody know what those two peaks are right there? That's the Pecos Baldy East, the Pecos Baldy West. And some others. Uh, we would peak with my friend. Flag Mountain was two days. That was a pretty long, exhausting one. Sierra Mosca, uh, elevation gain for the two days was 6,200 feet, about 11.3 miles a day. These are just some of the ones that were the longest. Uh, the Latier Lake one, uh, Wheeler Peak, actually I've done it four times now, Wheeler Peak, and staying at Horseshoe Lake was a long one. 
uh, 29 and a half miles to get south. Church's Peak, they, they, uh, anytime they label a new peak uh, somewhere, I, I have to go get it. So we're just about a, a whole new hike <coughs> about. And uh, the Hickorita Peaks, this was the one where we uh, had to harvest snow. That was 34 and a half miles. North Church's, uh, 37 and a half. Cibola. Um, that was the one I went across all those logs at the Forest Service. I called the Forest Service back and I said, hey, don't tell people there's no logs there. But that's, uh, that's the one with Cibola Peak, that um, uh, 29 and a half miles. And and then uh, I've done through just Peak so many times. I did it. Uh, Four times, 35 miles, another time at 50. That's my, my favorite area. And someone uh, was asking me at dinner tonight, I'll just share a tiny bit where my favorite hike is. And that is uh, in uh, the, check the time here. That is in uh, the Pecos Wilderness, starting at uh, the Santa Barbara campground. And that's why you see so many. I just love that area. They're starting in the Santa Barbara campground up the East Fork of the Santa Barbara River. It's best to do it in five days. You could do it in four and then across Skyline Ridge with the gorgeous views to Truchas Lake and then hiking and hiking um, the Truchas Peak the next day and out the West Fork of the Santa Barbara. And I'm sure somebody knows what that peak is right there. What is that? What's that? Must be South Truchus from a weird angle to me. That's actually Truchus right there. That's Truchus. That's Little South Truchus. Yeah. Which I had to do a whole hike just to get that one. That's and that's uh, Medio Truchus and Little Truchus right there. Mm -hmm. right. And just some of my favorite peaks. <laughs> We have here, um, uh, you know, why I like this, that little peak, uh, Osha Mountain and those side peaks is, you know, there's the, there's the road to Taos, there's a high road to Taos, but there's also the ultra high road to Taos, and that's taking a four-wheel drive <laughs> deep to the east, and I guess that was one of my favorites just because it was such an incredible four-wheel drive road to so you have a four-wheel driver. I think I put on, on my trip reports how to do it, but to take the ultra-high road to Taos. Mount Taylor, which you got to hike in June coming up. That's a favorite one because just the beautiful views. I spent the, top, the night on top um, of uh, there one time watching the lights of Albuquerque come on. Wheeler Peak, a <laughs> favorite. Uh, Little Costilla. I'm going to have to do that one again this summer because there's a little bump on the other side I'm going to need sometime. San Antonio Mountain is a beautiful one. Santa Barbara Peak. I've been there, and that's a picture right there, Santa Barbara Peak. Not much, but it's such a beautiful setting right there, and it is difficult to get to the top. Uh, Gold Hill. How many been to Gold Hill, the top of Gold Hill? Yeah, go to Goose Lake and up Gold Hill. That's such an iconic peak in New Mexico. That's my favorite unnamed peak, peak 12, 9,000. Hikarita Peak is a favorite. Um, Big Costilla, and that was on Ted Turner's land. Penitenti Peak, how many been on top of Penitenti Peak? You know what's so unique about Penitenti Peak to me is in all my peak bagging, mountain climbing stuff, it was the place that I think if you want to stand in New Mexico and get the greatest views, that's the peak right there because you can see uh, Wheeler all the way to the frontier. You can see the Sandia Mountains. You can see all the way to Sierra Blanca near Rio Doso. So it is, it's go there on a clear day and you just, you can see just about forever from that point. And my um, very favorite Truchas Peak, which have been six times, actually probably about eight or nine getting other little peaks in the area. Uh, anybody know what that peak is right there? I'll just real quick go through a few peaks and pictures and end up in a few minutes here. Is that Lola? Anybody know that? 
You're seeing it from the back side, so it's not a familiar look to you. That is Santa Fe Baldy from another. Did you say that? You said it? I didn't hear that. Good, good going. That's Santa Fe Baldy. And uh, uh, where did they put all the. Oh, you know, the neat thing about New Mexico is New Mexico's timberline is about 12,000 feet. So you've got about 80 some, and all, of all 80 of the peaks, there's only only two that are hidden in trees. So you, on all the 12,000 peaks except two, you get incredible views. And I mentioned I don't count a peak unless you get three miles. Um, and, you know, all of these peaks can be climbed, and you don't have to, uh, on none of them you need ropes to climb. There's a lot of them you could climb with ropes if you went a, a particular direction, but all of them can be climbed without ropes. Uh, so there's Santa Fe Baldy, and that's Santa Fe Baldy. These are some Santa Fe Baldy ones here. And <laughs> right there, I, uh, I'll back, backtrack one. But when I, I restarted with my son, uh, we were carrying the old old backpack stuff that I used to have. I carried about 55 pounds. And then I went, almost like an art, I went into, to, I didn't want a, a ultra, I didn't want ultra light camping, you know, where your, your sleeping bag and your poncho is a garbage bag. I didn't want to go quite that far with things. So I, uh, I did, I turned an ultralight luxury. So I knocked down from 55 pounds to 30, and almost always I take two pounds of T-bone steaks and cook it on the, on the I, I keep it real ultralight, so I use a, uh, a uh, two ounce chicken wire grill and cook it right on the coals, and my friends have told me it's as good as the best restaurants there too. So that's, that's kind of the next picture getting, see my little, uh, uh, chicken wire grill there, <laughs> two ounces. And there's my tent. That's my favorite. I have a whole lot of different tents. And you know, I, I've, I've done the, the frameless backpacks and uh, the frame backpacks, but that's kind of my staple. It carries a lot. I like the frame. I like, I, I found that you can hike and you can rest. And I like that metal. I can lift it off my shoulders. And I pretty much go at a pace. I pretty much hike all day. And and uh, uh, that's my little little tent with it. And, and then another kind of neat thing I found is you can get a, a little backpack like that one. That only weighs a pound and goes about that size. So you can go to your camp and then reuse that little one pound backpack. I got about three minutes and then questions. So uh, let me, there's my tent. I'll just try to zoom through. And uh, I, I have uh, the down, uh, I love down sleeping bags because they pack so small, and uh, yet they are just so warm. I'm, I love the down, and I, I didn't use to use pad, but I'm getting old, so I use a pad now, so. And then I put my GPS tracks in, and I was mentioning uh, all, most of my hikes I have dropped on Google Earth. And that's not a great 3D image of it, but if you go to my sites, and I'm even dropping them on the YouTube thing, I typically put a 3D view of the hike where it is. And there's Santa Barbara Peak. I'm just gonna, real quick, that's when we had to harvest snow on the one. Uh, there's our, our trip where we spent the whole time above Timberline, hiking on Skyline Ridge. And there I am. <laughs> in Boy Scouts, right there, I, I got it in, we used to go once per month as a kid, and uh, just uh, went in, I thought that was a 50 mile hike in the Pecos Wilderness, those are my, you can spot my four buddies with, my three buddies with the same color backpack right there, I'm still in touch with them too, there's my award for it, there we are, hiking up um, to the Skyline Ridge as a kid. And I'm just going to, I was actually one of the first person to get a dome tent. That's when I was about 19. And there I am. <laughs> 19, do I look different? Right there. There I am, about 19. There's a poor picture <laughs> way back. And um, 
we already asked about those are church's peaks right there uh, I, I love to try to get all different levels of, uh, of pictures on the hikes and I'm doing real quick to, oh I turned had a little fun so we, I turned it with the Adobe Photo into a golf course, the Church's, <laughs> Church's golf course, right? Here. That's a, kind of fun. But it almost looks like that. I added a few more fairways. <laughs> and there's my son. I, I'm not too big on that Bibby tent. I tried a lot of different things. And, you know, some of my favorite high alpine flowers down at the Church's Lakes. Uh, and there's my favorite hike I was just talking about right there. Uh, and there, there it is on Google Earth. That's the one I was telling you from Santa Barbara Campground. It's probably my favorite hike. Uh, I just redid Trail Riders Wall recently. So I'm going to real quick just go through. You can see most of my pictures on my... Uh, I love the... I'm a liquid <laughs> cooker. I like the liquid stuff. And you always spot those little birds in the pecos. I'm sure you've seen them in places. They're some of the most curious little birds. And real quick, I'm going to jump to the end. My time is about up. prepared. <laughs> yeah, and actually I had her cut out half. I mean, I, I put together a huge one that lasts me for years here. I did. I wanted to mention just some of my favorite equipment. I know when I first started, you probably done this, and that uh, you, you, uh, we used to use uh, halogen tablets when I was in the Scouts, and before that it was iodine, and then when I started again, it's just like pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping, and pumping and, and, uh, you know, that was a little maybe better than the Halozone tablet. But this is a gravity filter one, and that's 10 liters of water. And it's almost like going like a small sink when you use it. So you go down to the lake, and it's got a, a holder on it, you know, five two-liter bottles of soda, I think, 10 liters. And that lasts pretty much the whole time you're there. And it just, uh, so that's my, that's my number one equipment item for you right there, that uh, uh, Ketodyne 10 liter thing. And it, it flows again, just almost like a, a slow sink. And there it is being used. And also, I, I just want to mention real quick that my equipment, I, I, uh, I really get into things, and, and I, uh, so I put all of my equipment on a, an Excel program, and uh, then I, you know, you can go ahead and tell me, just click, 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 and you know just what you, what your weight is, or you can step on a scale, too, that's another way to do that. <laughs> but, uh, so that, that's all my equipment. If anybody wants me to, you know, I can email you my equipment list up here, and you know, I have all the weights. You can put your own stuff in there. Just kind of fun a little bit. Um, so that's my equipment. I could send you that. Um, and that's that's a presentation at another time, sometime right about my favorite hike as far as stuff. So anyway, I maybe I went like three minutes over I should. So any questions that I can answer? It's been just my pleasure to do this and share, and I've got, you can see I'm way over prepared here. So. <laughs> any questions? Yes. So there's a couple of uh, peaks. You mentioned Old Mike and um, Taos Cone and some of those. When I was up there years past, there were signs about um, it was, uh, you know, off limits. What was the, uh, how'd you work uh, those? Or well, if I, did, if I didn't actually cross a no trespassing sign with a two, plus it is right, it is actually on both, it's on the border there. And my son and I were hiking up from Taos Cone, and uh, we... We uh, heard gunshots, and uh, so we thought, are these crazies? Should we run, or should we go back? So we went back, and they were the Taos Rangers, 
And I said, could we just hike the peaks along this edge? And he said, no. And I, said, I, and I asked him again. I asked him like three times. He said, okay, you can hike the peaks along this edge and go there. But, it, but it's, it's on, the, on the Forest Service end house, but they kind of view it as theirs. But they, they actually did give me permission the hard way on that a bit. Gunshots at us. My son heard the heard the bullet before we heard the sound. But I don't think they were actually trying to shoot to get us, but they they impressed us there. Any other questions? You yes. think they were actually actually shooting? I mean, they were shooting, knowing you were there and trying yeah. to get your attention. Yeah, I think they were. They thought, well, let's there they are. Let's shoot about fifty feet over. Them. I don't think they were actually shooting at mm -hmm. us. So. But they did give us the okay. But um, coming up that other way, you know, so the, I don't think there's signs anymore there. Sometimes there's, there, maybe it's been a sign, but I don't think there's signs anymore from that way. And it's on the border for service and their land, too. But the others are, are deep in their land. Other questions? Yes? It's more of an observation, but I look very carefully at your photos, and I don't think it rains on you. <laughs> I know how to make it stop raining is you, you put on your rain poncho. Yes. You know, I'm not going to put it on, I'm not going to put it on, then you put it on, and uh, as soon as you put it on, it stops raining. I've been really fortunate. I have had very little rains. I think the, the worst rain that I got in was when I was in Boy Scouts, and we went from, from Church's Peak um, to the uh, Pecos Baldy Lake, and we hiked all day, and it was poured in the morning, poured in the afternoon. We would use plastic as, as tents, and I can remember the rain hitting us, my face about that far from the plastic rain all day. But I really have been fortunate. I haven't had very many all the way rains. I did have one two years ago uh, up near uh, the Truchas Peaks where it was, uh, uh, during that it was cold and I, it rained all the time. They had wet clothes and I wrote a trip report about that. But only a couple. It's pretty amazing. I really haven't had too many rain issues. Yes, sir. You said Ted Turner's land is like a cruise. Is it a resort? A bit, yeah. They, uh, they, uh, you can you stay at, at their place, and they they have five star chefs and five star dinners. And I remember we were um, uh, we were six hours in the roads the particular day that we did a fifteen mile hike, and we got back at ten thirty, and the chefs were waiting for us, and we had a, an elk steak, and a, and I think my son had a buffalo steak. And uh, then they said, "What? Well, what do you want?" We said, "We had banana splits. They had banana splits for us. They just they treated us a lot like we were on a cruise ship. Best barbecue I've ever had in my life on that. So, just the experience was well worth it there." Other questions? So we'll switch to just a couple that came in online. Um, a couple questions about your backpack. Um, what's the average pack weight you carry now, and do you still carry full packs to the summits? Uh, I've, that one that we had to harvest snow, we had to carry full packs the whole way, and it was about a 30 some mile hike. And uh, my packs have been dwindled down to 55. <laughs> to including steak and a lot of water, about 31 pounds now. And it's really ultralight luxury. It's just as nice as when I had uh, the 55 pound packs. I really did a lot of research on things. And again, anybody want my equipment list and stuff, I could email you that. You could put in your own Excel program or something. So around 30 now. But whenever I do any kind of conditioning hikes, I take about 15 just to stay in condition, even if just little the cardio hikes that I do. The cardio hikes are kind of interesting that I lead in Albuquerque. We blast up the mountains as hard as we can for an hour, regroup, and blast down. And, um, uh, and anybody can go at any pace, and they stop at the Albert point there. It's about four to six miles, about 12 to 1,600 feet elevation gain. And uh, you don't have to... I'm probably in as good a shape as I was in high school or college, but that's because I work at it. You get a free ticket till age 40, and then you got to work at it <laughs> after that. And I haven't missed three cardiovascular exercises 
and this month is 19 years. I really keep consistent to keep in good shape. And my goal, I'm 69 right now, my goal is to hike Kilimanjaro at 70. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Another question? All right, so what about peak bagging outside of New Mexico? Not too much. For age 60, I did uh, Mount Whitney. Uh, my son and I were on a lottery. We couldn't get on the lottery, so we had to go with REI Adventures. It was a 64-mile thing with REI Adventures. So I got Mount Whitney for 60. 65, I did the highest peak in, in Colorado, and I think it works. If you've done the highest peak, all the others count. <laughs> <laughs> And I, so I've only done two in Colorado, State Line Peak, and then I did with my daughter. We hiked the highest in, in Arizona, Humphreys, and so not too much out of the state. And plus, it's so great you don't have to drive so far, you know, here. I, even though I've driven 10 hours sometimes in New Mexico just to get a peak in a day. Another question? Are there any more in the room for us here? All right, so um, just it, it, if throw your hand up, if something comes up, I'll watch for you. Um, we did have a, uh, at least one uh, request for your equipment list. I'll give you that email address. Um, if anybody else thinks of it later and they want those things that Phil offered, uh, you can always respond to any of those registration emails, and I can pass along that Yeah, if you would uh, pass that along, I'll send it to you. And then you can plug in your stuff and just... You know, I, I get a little electronic way, Wayne device. Actually, I use for my science lab, I use the old spring ones at first, now the electronic one, and then just put it in and click, 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 or stand on a scale. Okay, if those are all of the questions, I just want to thank Phil again for sharing your peak bagging adventures with us tonight. Uh, everybody, please remember to look out in your email for the survey coming, and do check out Peak's website for some great uh, spring and even summer programming coming up. Our big Earth Day festival is coming up in April. I uh, hope to see you there and, and at the next couple um, Mountaineers meetings. Thanks, everybody, again for joining us this evening, and have a good night. And on my YouTube channel, if you get on that, I'm gradually doing that, and eventually I'll get all 30,000 of those pictures on that. I can't get that, <laughs> I can't get that many pictures on the other, but I can get it on, on that. So thank you all. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you.